Hi, it's Mandy, your gluten-free OT, and welcome back to Behavior Works. Thanks so much for checking out this really important episode, moving into the holidays and talking about navigating family dinners with your picky eater. As a pediatric occupational therapist, I've been working with families and little ones for over 10 years, and every time around this year, the same subject comes up. When we think of family dinners, you know, gathering around the Thanksgiving table and all the special treats we wait a whole year to enjoy, that brings us a lot of excitement. But when you have a little one with a very limited food repertoire, that can be a time of intense anxiety. I wanna offer you a couple tips today to help navigate these family meal times and make things go smoothly for you and more importantly, for your little one. So the first tip may sound super simple, but I really can't overemphasize its importance. And that is, at any family meal time, make sure that your child has his or her preferred food available at every meal. Now for us, getting to have all the experiences of foods that maybe we only see or taste one or two times a year can be really exciting. When your child with sensory integration problems, maybe with a history of feeding problems, any of that newness, the sight, the smell, the texture, how all the food looks and feels, that can be very overwhelming and even alarming for a child. And then when you compound that by not only introducing all this newness, but there's nothing there that's familiar to them, that can be a really scary place to find themselves in. Kids in these positions are often going to act out or shut down just as a result of not having anything there that they feel safe to eat. It's absolutely okay to present your child with new foods or have them be exposed to a table of family favorites, but at the same time that you're introducing or exposing them to something new, make sure that they know and can see that something that they're familiar with and they really enjoy is always gonna be available to them. One example of this at Thanksgiving might be mashed potatoes, let's say. I bet your child loves French fries, who doesn't? So go ahead and give them French fries at Thanksgiving along with the mashed potatoes. A big gathering, unfamiliar people, unfamiliar foods in an unfamiliar place is not the time to, even for the first time, introduce a new food and certainly not to expect your child to go ahead and eat that right away. On average, it takes 12 exposures to a food for your child to determine whether they're actually going to develop a taste for it and that's going to be one of their preferred items that they want to eat. So the first tip, like I said, is always make sure that your child has access to something, at least one thing that they really like when you're presenting new or non-preferred foods. The second tip kind of goes with that idea and I'm just going to carry on with the french fry and mashed potato example and that involves using a bridge food. A bridge food is something that we use with a preferred food and it helps bridge to a new food. Some common examples that I use a lot with kids are ketchup, ranch dressing, or barbecue sauce. Those tend to be three favorites for the little ones that I work with. So in this french fry and mashed potato example, you might think it's absolutely normal to provide ketchup with french fries for your little one. If you'd like them to maybe give mashed potatoes a try, allow them to dip the mashed potato into the ketchup too. It's not gonna hurt anything. And again, the ketchup is acting as a bridge between something that is comfortable and familiar and known, the french fry, and the ketchup in this case is also a comfortable and familiar food and that's bridging to the food that is a little bit unfamiliar. It might have the same color and it might be the same temperature as a french fry, but it feels a little different, it looks a little different, and even having to eat it with utensil can be different. So using those bridge foods is one way to help kind of manage that introduction and make that go a little bit more smoothly when you're wanting to add foods to your little one's diet. So I'm sharing these thoughts with you as an occupational therapist, and that's with my background of sensory integration, food sensitivities, and you know, like I said, years of working with kids who are termed by their families as picky eaters. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Kristen, and she's going to share from her perspective as a behaviorist. So thanks so much for checking us out. Here's Kristen. Thank you so much, Mandy, for those incredible tips. We've actually used bridge foods with Preston, and I didn't know what they were called. 
The example that you used was perfect, ketchup, because that's what we used to get him to start eating eggs. He loved ketchup on his french fries, so we started putting them on his eggs, so that works. Thank you so much for that. One other thing I'd like to share with you, the third and final tip to expand on Mandy's idea, is when you are having dinner away from your home at a, an aunt's, aunt's or uncle's house or um, somebody that, somewhere that the child is unfamiliar with, you also want to try to bring their fork and their plate and even a booster seat or a high chair that the child is familiar with. This creates more familiarity in what we call behaviorism, that stimulus-stimulus pairing, and it makes the child more comfortable and hopefully meal times will go better for you. Hopefully these tips will make your holidays a lot happier. If you'd like to see more videos like this, comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Happy holidays!